All right, it's Candace again from Grow Local, and today we are at Joanne and Brian Callender's garden, and we're gonna take a little bit of a look around her place and see what she's doing. She has started this garden, what, two years ago? Yeah, this is the, the third year I've had a garden at all, and this is the first year that we've actually had a full full garden in here, so it's it's pretty exciting. And I know that you've got some lettuce that was growing over there. Mm -hmm. Yep, I do, right right in this row here. Um, it's almost finished now, we're down to the last few, and uh, you know, you can see if you look at them, um, that they're starting to, to spiral at the top, which means they're they're pretty much done and they're about to go to seed. So it's it's the last few days for the lettuce and uh, and then we're gonna have to get it gone, so yeah. And you believe that you should leave at least 10% of your garden to go to seed so that you are giving back the pollinators of some place to yeah. pollinate and lay their eggs and you get to save seed too for next year, right? I really like the idea of letting, so I had a, a broccoli over here for example that just was starting to go to seed and for me um, one or two plants out of a row that goes to flower is really good. I keep bees, I'm really conscious about pollinators in the garden and um, one of the ideas around permaculture is this idea that you give 10% back to nature and uh, you know if you want to have a healthy ecosystem in your garden nature plays a part in that and so you, you got to fuel the, the pollinators so yeah and you said permaculture so i know that with your garden you said that you've done it because you've got so many trees that are up behind here mm -hmm. that you have planted this so that the morning sun and early afternoon sun hits all your garden and they get the light that they need the sunshine that they yeah, need yeah we um we thought long and hard about um, what we wanted to accomplish with this space and so going back probably four years now we had uh, Heather Schaub who is a permaculture person. She came out and did a consult with us and we talked about what we wanted to achieve here and she gave us some ideas and some pointers and a, and a plan to follow and we've been kind of chipping away at that for the, for the last few years. and. Uh, this is an annual garden and uh, so my permaculture experiment is kind of on the other side over there um, and but the sa same ideas apply like you know you got to use what you've got like I'm I can't plant things that want full sun in this space and uh, right now the the full sun space is pretty cooking and so these plants would all be really struggling in those conditions so you know brassicas are working really well in this kind of forest garden setup that we have so yeah. yeah, and it's working out well enough that apparently you're feeding some of the neighbors too. Yeah, I, uh, you know, the, I call the, the front ditch next to the road out there, I call it my virus defense moat and, uh, you know, this idea of isolation, but I've gotten to know my community actually better since all of this happened because they're walking by all, a day, all, all day long and they're just so excited to see what we've been doing in here and they've been watching it develop since we built the house and moved in. and. So it's kind of, it's it's really neat. And so some of them started coming in and saying, are you selling any of your stuff? And so, you know, sometimes I can cut a box here and there. And, and so now I have a, a few people that as soon as I have enough stuff, I just kind of send them a letter or, or an email and just say, would you like a box this week? And, and then all my extra goes, goes to those guys. So, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Now, I know that you've got cabbages growing here. Mm -hmm. How do you typically harvest them? You were pointing at this one earlier. Oh yeah, so well I just, I, I, I just kind of cut them at the base um, and if I, if I leave a, enough of the stem um, then I get these little buds that come out afterwards and uh, you know you don't get another full size cabbage out of it but you get enough extra leaves that you know it's a great stir fry cabbage or it's you know it helps you build your kimchi or whatever so you know I, I keep I'm looking around at um, different ways to use more of the plant. So I was harvesting some of these big leaves here. And um, I use these to make like a, a cannelloni and lasagna style um, things. So I, I use them as like lettuce wraps and, yeah. you know, just different ways to use more of the plant so that you get the best out of it. So I just cut all my garlic scapes off my garlic. So that's, you know, two for the price of one, really, and you get two crops out of one. So. And you were also saying that you grow what you know that you're going to use, and you know that you go through a 
buttload of spaghetti <laughs> sauce. <laughs> so she has tomatoes, you've got your garlic, yeah. you've got My onions. onions. Yeah, yeah, all the herbs and things that I want to put in there too. And um, so this is, for me, this is an exercise in how self-reliant can we actually be? And uh, can I really produce my own tomato sauce from scratch and have it sustain me till the next season kind of thing? And, you know, last year we got pretty close with it. We had tomato sauce um, into, into uh, February and I thought, you know, this year I think we can make it because we didn't have the full garden last year. So. See that, then that's, yeah. that's what the garden's yeah. all about. It's yeah. These cabbages, like I just adore cabbages and these are awesome for my kimchi. So I, I love my kimchi. I'm getting really into like fermented foods and how do you preserve that harvest and, and keep the nutritional value at its kind of greatest concentration. So the fermentation is great for that. So, cool. Yeah. Um, we were talking earlier too, and I asked her if she'd ever heard of a woman named Rosalind Creasy. And in 2008, Rosalind Creasy did an experiment and she spent just under $70 on compost, some seeds and a couple of transplants. And she planted up her garden. And through the season, every time she did the cup, cut and come again on her lettuce, or she just mm -hmm. clipped off the outside leaves, she weighed everything and then she went down to the organic food store and priced it out and by doing that because she knew she had an organic garden um, by the end of the season they charted everything and she had over seven hundred dollars in produce in payback for that seventy dollar investment so it really really can pay to grow your own food yeah it's amazing and like you know I, my my son has been a notoriously picky, picky eater um, as, a, as a young fella and last year I was on the farm and I was uh, bringing home broccolini and he fell in love with it and so this year the, the broccolini like was all for him and so I cut the broccolini for him and he just eats it in the garden just raw that's you know and uh, my littlest one it was the sunflowers and so they all get like a little piece of the action and yeah it's, it's super it's super nice to have all of this stuff just available for them and for them to see the amount of effort it takes to actually grow it. So, yeah. yeah, and you've got, you do have a greenhouse. We can go and take a look. Actually, I'd like to go and take a look at your permaculture area that you've got over there. Okay. Um, Absolutely. She's got beehives, chicken, she's got strawberries growing in a wall, but I think it's really worth a look. Hi, it's Candace with Grow Local and we are at Joanne and Brian Callender's garden and this time we are visiting her herbal garden where she grows a lot of fruits and she's got a lot of herbs and she uses it you use it for your own business right you make a lot of your own yeah, um, so I have, yeah, I have One Tree Health and Wellbeing which is a, a massage based business but um, it, it, you know it's not super running at the moment but um, but part of that is I have um, like lip balms and body butters and deodorants and, and things like that. And uh, some of those products I get to use the beeswax that comes from my own bees. And so that's pretty fantastic. I love, I love that. <laughs> um, and uh, you know, these, these are a source of endless fascination. And uh, last year we had our first honey harvest which again lasted us into January, January, February, so February was a sad month for us. Uh, no more honey, <laughs> <laughs> no more tomato sauce. Um, and uh, so yeah, so this is our, the third summer of our permaculture experiment and uh, so this year we have our first apples on the tree, we have our first cherries and they're looking pretty nice over there. And, and uh, apparently the kids have already stripped all the berries off of kids, this one. My kids like to wildcraft their snacks and so they have at the raspberries and the, the huckleberries and we've got blackberries all over the back here and so they just, they just march out and away they go and find their snacks. There you go. And you've got some chives. And yeah. is that... Oh. Are, they're a super great perennial. They just keep coming back stronger every year. And, uh, you know, again, like these ones are, are ready to be totally cut back now. But these um, flowering heads are amazing to, to break apart when they're in flower and, and sprinkle over a salad. And they're, they're just like the onion flavor you get is amazing. And, you know, these are things I don't really take a great deal of care of now. They just do their own thing and they keep coming back. So I like this idea that... Uh, you're putting in this effort a first time and, and uh, you reap what you sow. It, it keeps coming back. It's wonderful. Like, you know, I put asparagus in too and, you know, that, that was 
to build an asparagus trench is a huge undertaking, but you know, hopefully that's 20 years worth of asparagus that we get from that, so yeah. And this was comfrey and you've just cut that down. Yeah, so the comfrey, um, I, it's part of the kind of, the idea of the permaculture is that um, you create kind of like a, a complete ecosystem at the base of, of each of your trees and uh, each plant that you place with that tree um, contributes something different um, to a system and, and all of the things in that group do better because of each other and so it's this really interesting idea of just creating a, a really healthy and, and sustainable kind of ecosystem and the idea is that eventually I won't have to do a lot to this and it will just kind of happen and uh, you know the first year we put this in all of this was just mud it was just mud and fill and these little sticks in the ground and three summers in to see like it feels like an oasis in here and when the comfrey's tall like it's really yeah. tall and um, there's a bunch of different uses for it so I cut this down um, I let it flower and the bees they love it all the pollinators love it so once it's flowered I cut it down I put it in my compost it's amazingly nutritious for the compost and uh, uh, these big hardy stems create lots of air pockets in your compost and so you get this kind of really uh, good compost going and um, you know again that's a herbal medicine it's a really good uh, healing herb and so I'm not quite there yet but it's one of the things that's on my list is to start processing like healing cells and things like that yeah so, so you start now and you're gonna reap what yeah, you sow it's absolutely. just gonna keep coming back year after year yeah absolutely and uh, yeah so there's a few medicinal herbs in this garden but I think something that, that has been highlighted to me this year is that uh, I need to think about that a bit more and, and put a li little bit more effort into that for, for next year. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, and the, the joy of that is a lot of those things are perennials too, and they just, you know, once you get them in, they just keep on coming back. And well, and it's nice to see too, because you've, you're growing edible things, mm -hmm. but they're also ornamental. So you're yeah. just creating an absolutely yeah. beautiful garden that's well, good for the soul and absolutely and you talked of before about the edible landscaping and you know I talk to, to people wandering by all the time about that and uh, you know I love it you know it's beautiful and and everything has a purpose and a use and uh, you know the, the the difference between an annual garden and a perennial garden is that this system is pulling nutrition down into the ground and it's creating its own nutrition bank the annual systems, you they require input. And, you have to uh, keep replenishing and, it. And they, they take away, and, and so you always have to make sure you're replenishing it, and what, in what ways are you, are you doing that? So. And you can do that just by crop rotations, like your peas and your legumes are yeah, gonna absolutely. boost up your yeah, nitrogen in the soil so you can put your heavy green absolutely. crops in after. Um, I've got some plans to, to put some buckwheat in for cover cropping this year that uh, was uh, given to be me by my bee club and you know they're an awesome um, support for stuff like that too so um, and the buckwheat yeah. you will you'll sow it and then a couple weeks before you go to plant your garden is that when you turn it in turn uh, it over well I for if I'm going to to do that I mean I haven't done it before so this is going to be an experiment but the idea is probably before it goes to seed yeah I'll cut it down um, and then basically leave it there as a, a green mulch and uh, leave the root systems in place so that that creates a, a much healthier soil because all of those microbes in your soil start to break down those root systems and uh, you end up with better, more nutritious soil because of it. Yeah, so you're also. feeding the soil, not... Yeah, so, so I don't have a lot of experience there with that, but it's something I can't wait to, to try this year. Yeah, and I know it's really good because if you're doing it organically, then you don't have all those the man-made chemical fertilizers because yeah. the numbers are so high but yeah. that's because it's not as readily available to your plants so then you have to worry about the runoff going into yeah. your drinking yeah. water and that's totally it I mean the, the whole point of um, for me what I'm trying to do here is focus on building um, building soil building healthy soil that is super microbial rich because it's that interaction between the nutrition um, in the ground and the microbes that, that transport that nutrition into the plant. So without that interaction with the microbes, without that healthy soil, you know, that, that uptake mechanism is, is a lot more challenging. So Yeah. yeah. And your, your garden just isn't as healthy then. No, absolutely. Yeah. My food is more tasty, I think. I just love, love the way it all tastes. <laughs> They're darting around like crazy. I'm just sitting here going, okay, yeah. <laughs> nobody going to land on me?
Well, and so we have a, a bit of a clear cut out the back there and we were out the back just uh, looking at what forage the bees have out there and uh, you know there's so much fireweed and dandelions and there, there's all sorts of amazing things like all the um, the, the blackberries are, are oh yeah they're all now, yeah so I'm hoping I'm gonna get some of the the blackberry honey um, this year and uh, yeah so my, but my bees are, are a challenge and they're they're definitely quite a steep learning curve and uh, you know sometimes some days I <laughs> oh, <ready to> <laughs> Um, but I'm hooked. They they have me hooked. So. Oh, you also have incorporated along your the banks. You are growing strawberries, and you have brambles coming out there yeah, too. Yeah. Um. So the, I mean, for us, we're trying to create like a micro farm, and so we have you know a pretty small parcel of land here in terms of of a farming space, and so every inch counts and so vertical gardening is something that we get to, to try out here. We have these amazing um, uh, rock walls here and, and we, we decided that a great way to use that rock wall was, was to plant all the nooks and crannies with strawberries. So um, we had our, our one of our housemates help us out with that this summer and she planted all the strawberries for me. and. Uh, they're actually starting to take off. It's really exciting. The kids have had one strawberry each and <laughs> it looks like there's one ready to go. So hopefully, uh, hopefully it'll still be there by the time we get there and the birds haven't eaten it, so. And we're gonna be back in a minute, but now we're gonna go check out the greenhouse. Yeah, the greenhouse, it's uh, the hot part of the day. So we'll see how things are doing in there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, we're back as promised and we are at Joanne's greenhouse and I'm just gonna let her tell you what she's got going on in here. Um, yeah, so this is this is the first year I've had the greenhouse and we, we invested in, it's just a little small six by 10 and, uh, and my husband and, and our dear family member put this all together for me in the freezing cold in February so that I could try to get the season underway at the end of February and, uh, and so we made it so um, my husband built me uh, a few little benches in here and um, the, the top layer, I don't know if you can see from here, but it has um, like a little shelf in it and this is another idea I stole from, from Anne Collins and uh, so this little um, tray on the top of my table is back filled with sand and a heat cable and so in February it lets me get a lot of stuff started that without that heat, that warmth, I, I couldn't get started. Yeah. So. Um, this is the first year I had any kind of like UV lights and things like that. So um, it was a, it was a big big year of progression this year for to have the greenhouse. It it got a lot of things in the ground uh, early. All those brassicas that we saw all yeah. started. Yeah, you get year, a real so. good jump on the season. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, I really um, I'm super grateful for it, and it's it's interesting to see how. Um, I'm just I'm just working on on a project right now to get all of these cucumbers out and in the ground and uh, and then it's time to start my winter stuff and I'm already behind because you know this is a small greenhouse so I kind of have to do things sequentially and and just make and be in January of, this year everything's just a little yeah, bit off yeah, schedule the new but normal <laughs> yeah yeah that's the no, absolutely nutshell. and you've got tomatoes you've got well I started everything in here and right now I've just got the last of the cucumbers in here um, a few of the extra asparagus that I, I uh, put in this year I'm gonna put oh, those okay. somewhere else but I just wanted to make sure that they were uh, taken care of in the meantime um, I've got some tarragon in here um, I had to restart my basil because we we have had such a heck of a time with the rain and the slugs that uh, the that my basil ceased to exist and I have started again and uh, and so that's part of it too right not everything works all the time and, uh, no like you were saying to me before it's it's just all a learning curve and absolutely if yeah no the carrots were a tough sell this year too they did not like the first round of carrots that I direct seeded uh, had a really tough time so you know you win some you lose some but uh, I know I mean, you're sure learning I got my but, first <laughs> carrots <laughs> hopefully learning about my losses and uh, so I don't repeat them next year but uh, yeah well, thank you, Joanne, for letting us tour your garden. And it's just been absolutely amazing. Oh, I wish I had the space. It's pretty fun. It's definitely keeping us busy. And uh, yeah, no, it's a pleasure to have you. And thanks for coming. Hey, no problem. And we will see you again. And the next time we see you, we'll be talking about compost. Mm -hmm.